Let's look at what the tenant and the business needs and then turn to the market to find them the ideal space. And that encompasses everything. Location, budget, growth, amenities, image, where are the clients coming from, where are the employees coming from, where are the executives coming from, and more. But it's taking all that information with the consultative approach, educating them on what their options are. Welcome to B2B Synergy, the Power Partners USA podcast, your exclusive guide to discovering the potential of B2B partnerships. I'm Alan Armijo, owner of Power Partners USA, business-to-business -business introduction and referral service. Our members are B2B professionals who team up to provide each other repeat referral business or collaboration. Today's episode shines a light on Power Partner USA member Jeffrey Hakim, owner of Centric Partners. Uh, Jeff, I'm really looking forward to this conversation or to get a complete understanding of commercial real estate and property brokerage. How are you doing? Really good. Good morning, Alan. How are you? Good, good. Uh, Jeff, can you um, explain your commercial real estate services to us? Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. We, we do many things as it relates to commercial real estate, anything from property brokerage, we also provide lease administration for our clients, portfolio management for our clients with multiple locations, and strategic planning for any and all of our clients. But really, the core of the business is the brokerage, and that includes leasing and or purchasing of commercial property. Primarily office space, that's really office space and office buildings. That's where the majority of our business comes from. Uh, but I do have a small team and we do a lot of work with industrial warehouse properties, even retail properties, a lot of restaurant work, and also for our clients that are purely investors that are looking for investment type properties, whether it's commercial properties for investment or even multi-unit residential properties. What is your territory and how big is your office? So I have a team of seven and we cover most of Southern California Basin. We're, we're headquartered out of Orange County. That's where my main office is. That's where my team operates out of. Uh, we, we do quite a bit of work in Long Beach, Los Angeles. We do quite a bit of work in Inland Empire, Ontario, San Bernardino, especially for our industrial warehouse clients. And actually, beginning of the year, we just opened up a, a satellite office down in San Diego as we're breaking into that market as well. But the core of the business is really Orange County and, and Long Beach at the moment. And expansion plans from there. How do you differentiate yourself from other commercial brokers or commercial real estate businesses? Uh, is, there, is there a lot of competition? There's absolutely a lot of competition. I mean, right off the bat, I have 20 years of experience. I think that sets me apart from majority of the competition. And then our value proposition is quite a bit different where we focus on the occupant, the tenant, the business, what we call tenant representation working with them exclusively, and we're not out chasing listings or trying to develop landlord relationships or trying to develop property management relationships. And first and foremost, that avoids any major conflict of interest. The bulk of the industry, our competition, represents both sides, dual agency, inherently a conflict of interest. Again, that sets us apart uh, from 90% of our competition. And then we have a very consultative full service approach for our clients, where it's not just about the transaction. I feel we're very good brokers. We have access to everything that's available and finding the property while the core of the business, the most essential part where I see our job in helping our clients find the most efficient space, the most conducive space for their business at the best terms and conditions. To me, that's a given, but we have additional touch points throughout the transaction and even over the length of their lease wherein we're servicing our clients continually. And I don't really know of any other firms that operate like that. Right. Well, let's talk about your client makeup. Who are you typically working with to find a commercial real estate or investment property? It, we have a pretty wide range of clientele. I mean, we work really well with professional services, especially when we're you know looking at office space and office buildings. So financial technology, insurance, legal industries, healthcare are all within our wheelhouse. We work with a lot of manufacturers that look at the industrial warehouse type properties, a lot of logistics firms. I mean, we're fairly industry agnostic, if you will. And if you start talking about our retail clients, it's all over the board. We have fitness use, we have food use, we have 
healthcare, pharmaceutical use. So it's, but like I said, we're pretty, pretty wide open with type of clients. Great. If I'm talking to a potential referral prospect for you, what are some of the qualifying questions I should be asking them? There's a lot. I think right off the bat, are they happy with their broker relationship? Have they, you know, reviewed their real estate strategy recently? Is their space optimized for their business? How many employees? How much space do you occupy? How much time do you have left on your lease? Are you interested in purchasing property for your business? Those are all very basic, essential questions when getting introduced. But uh, I mean, for the most part, if there's a business that occupies space, then at some point their lease will expire, at which point they will have to renew or relocate or purchase. And those are all opportunities for us to get involved and create value for the tenant or the business. Okay. So, you know, I can see how your services enco uh, encompass a wide range from, you know, lease negotiation to strategic planning with your customers. And I understand you're currently working on behalf of a Power Partner USA member. Can you tell us a little about that? Or can you walk us through a typical client engagement process to kind of maybe how you might have to tailor your approach to the client's needs? Yeah, absolutely. And like I mentioned earlier, we're very consultative in our approach. Some of the times it can be a very simple lease renewal and there's not a whole lot to it. But no matter what, from the get-go, we have basically a needs assessment where we sit down with the decision maker, we sit down with the department heads and Depending on the space use and the type of business, we have a pretty lengthy intake form that we go through to really uncover needs, opportunities, pain points, and whatnot, so we can truly understand the client's situation. And then based upon that, we, we become their commercial broker, just like you might hire a residential realtor to help you find a home for your family. Businesses will hire us to help them find a space for their business. Once we do the needs assessment, we will do our research and put together a list of options, a market survey, if you will, and get our client educated on the market and what their options are. That's really where we pride ourselves is educating our clients. So when they make a decision, whatever that might be, whether it's renew, relocate, expand, contract, purchase, sell, they are first and foremost making an informed decision. Um, and then we get to work as their commercial broker. We identify viable options. We coordinate tours. We take them out, show them properties, help with any due diligence, feasibility, you know, any use restrictions, depending on the type of property and the type of business. And from there, the goal is to find properties that are of interest, viable properties that we can then get into negotiations with, um, at which point we do get into negotiations with those viable options. We negotiate very aggressively on behalf of our clients to make sure they are getting aggressive economics, aggressive concessions, and different levels of protection built into their, their lease. Then at which point we help facilitate either the lease agreement, the lease process in conjunction with their attorney or counsel, if they have any, or facilitate the escrow process in the event that they're purchasing a property. And then we get the transaction closed out. And if they're relocating, we'll help them with any sort of relocation that comes along. And if it's, you know, simply a renewal, then we just, again, you know, make sure everything is copacetic and they can get back to business as usual. It's a pretty comprehensive process. What about, where do financials come to for the client? Mm -hmm. Are there any financial requirements the client has to meet? Absolutely, like requirement of financials. But basically, any landlord property owner is going to want to know the financial wherewithal of their tenant, right? So they're going to look at company financials. It's typically the last year or two tax returns or balance sheet, profit and loss statement, Sometimes they'll run a credit report, but basically they want to know who they're partnering with and they want to know the financial wherewithal of the group. And it's important that they have good financials and really strong financials are going to allow for better concessions and better rental rate with that landlord. And it's a great question because we've had clients that were reluctant to show their financials because they make a lot of money. And they thought the landlord would see their financials and just want to charge them more. But you know, we had to explain to them, it's, it's the exact opposite. It's just like if you're going to get a credit card or a loan. It just has to do with risk. 
if you are financially solvent, have great credit, you're less risk, they're going to they're gonna pay more to get the deal done with you. Other way around, if you have bankruptcies or credit you know, issues or bad financials, you're higher risk. They're not going to give you better concessions. They're not going to give you more free rent and, and more tenant improvement allowance. It just comes down to risk. It's that simple. But it's a critical part of the process. And actually, anytime we engage with client, that's one of the first things we want to look at is their financials and any existing lease agreements. So we know exactly what we're dealing with. And so we can advise appropriately for them moving forward and really set the proper expectation. Right. Very interesting. The client makeup, you mentioned that you have investors, real estate investors. Can you give a description of a person or entity that is a real estate investor? What does that mean? Yeah, it's a pretty broad category. I mean, we have some mom and pop investors that are looking to spend just a couple million dollars on an investment property, say maybe an apartment complex with four, six, or eight units. And then we have some more institutional family office type investors that are looking to spend tens and tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars on different types of properties and development opportunities here across Southern California. We have a few other clients, investors that are actually investing in commercial properties that they are renovating and either repositioning. For example, early last year, we had a client, we helped them acquire a 40,000 square foot office building in Costa Mesa. It was essentially a single tenant building. And over the last year, we worked with them to put a condo map in place and break up that single tenant office building into 11 individual office condos that we are now in the process of selling off to individual owner users as office space. In the meantime, they're putting in about $6 million of renovation into the building, the interior, the individual suites, the exterior, the landscaping to make this dusty old building that was built in the 1980s and had very few, if any, renovations into really a high-end, top-notch, class A office space that companies can take ownership in. And it's super unique. There's other office condos around, but there are none that have this level of finish. And so we're actually really excited about that project. It's coming to market as we speak. Do you see this as being on the ground floor of a growing trend? And who typically would want to purchase an office condo like that? Who do you see moving in? I do see it as a growing trend. I just don't know how much opportunity there will be out there to do that because you got to find the really the the perfect storm to take that type of building and, and renovate it and then redevelop it. But I mean, individual units are going to be 2,000 upwards of 10 or 11,000 square feet if we put two units together. So, you know, that's 10 to 50 employees. And the office market, five to 25, 35 employees is 80% of the market. So it, it's like I described earlier, it's professional services, it's real estate investment firms, it's attorneys, it's, I mean, those types of businesses that are very interested in this because again, looking at the market, 80% of the office market are companies that are five to 25 employees. And there's just not a lot of opportunity to own in that size range. That's like you know, 2,000 to 5,000 square feet, and they don't make buildings that small. So there's just a, a huge demand, and especially considering the lack of availability, it's it's going to do very well. Yeah. So you call it an office condo, right? Because it sounds like a condominium type arrangement for the owner and being part of a building. Absolutely. So just like, I mean, some people get a little confused because when they say condo, they think residential, but I mean, there's nothing residential about this. It's going to be office space. They're just individual units. They have their own APN. You can take full title. It's going to be a professional office space. They're just called condos because of the common area, the common wall that they share within the complex. I mean, the concept sounds great. You don't have the ability to own your office space rather than lease it, right? I mean, that's the exactly, idea. Exactly, exactly it. Yeah. I mean, it's, how many times do we hear, I'm tired of making my landlord rich. I want to buy a building. And it's great if you're 10,000, 20,000 square feet or above. But if you're, you know, two, three, four, 5,000 square feet, again, they just don't make buildings that small. It doesn't make sense. It's not feasible. 
Yeah, and you might not want to be the landlord yourself for the rest yeah. of the office space. Man. That's the alternative. You go buy a 10,000 square foot building and occupy a small portion of it and lease out the rest. But you're right. Then you become a landlord and have to deal with that sorts of issues, which some people do. But again, you're usually in the business you're in. You know, you're either a landlord or an investment firm or financial advisor or real estate attorney or whatever it is that you are. Well, in my experience, it always seems to me like a company, you know, so I work for a company or I see a company that grows and then the next thing you know, the owner is buying he says, oh, we're moving. I bought a building. You know, I'm like, just like that, you bought a building, right? So these are like kind of the hidden behind the scenes things that goes on because, you know, owners aren't telling you that they're buying buildings. Yep. They I mean, it's a strategy. It's a great strategy for the business. It's a great strategy for the business owner to acquire property, to have a nest egg, to, you know, stop, you know, spending all their money on rent. And it's it's absolutely possible. And I don't think a lot of people look at it because they're just, you know, stuck in the the rut of, hey, I'm paying rent and that's what I'm what I do. But no, acquiring property for your business and acquiring property for you know the individual is a a great investment strategy. Without a doubt, I don't think anyone will disagree with that. Right. So as a reminder to our listeners, Power Partners USA is a B2B introduction service. We introduce business professionals to each other who can provide each other repeat leads or referrals or do business collaboration. We are targeting this podcast, Jeffrey, to your Power Partners to bring you more repeat referral business. Who are your Power Partners? I find financial advisors, CPAs, Real estate attorneys, even business coaches are all very good power partners. Are, why business coaches? Kind of like a, a, a CPA. That they're in there often with the business owner that's trying to grow their business. And they have that insight to their pain points and their strategy and, and what's working for them and what's not working for them. And, and quite often... Real estate is part of that plan. And then how do the power partners get to know you and know your services? I think just giving me a call and let's sit down sometime, grab a cup of coffee and talk about it. I mean, I have marketing material I can send them, but that's not very exciting. Obviously, anybody can reference our website, but I would absolutely welcome the opportunity to sit down with them to talk about what I do, why I do it, the value we create, and how we could potentially work together. Well, hopefully this podcast and the short videos we create out will be a kickoff to those conversations and meetings with you for you. I'm sure it will. Man, these videos are great. All right. So, you know, I've always been curious about this because we hear it on the news and it's kind of like the elephant in the room for most people not involved with commercial real estate. But since COVID of March of 2020, all we hear is about commercial spaces are less than full. Workers don't want to go to, to the office, work from home. What are you seeing as of today? And this is like May, June of 2024. And how, how would you describe that notion today? Yeah, you know, it's still very much a hot topic. And I'd say there's a, a bit of gray area, although I think it's starting to clear up. Obviously, the work from home was extremely popular. And everyone expected that it was going to be the end of office space forever. But I, I think that's calmed down. And, and now what we're really seeing is people are returning to the office. The office market is stabilizing without a doubt. And, and keep in mind, my opinion and commentary here is pretty skewed towards Orange County. I mean, you know, you could look at New York, you can even look at Long Beach, you can look at a lot of other submarkets that aren't experiencing the same thing. But there's some other going on in Orange County, which I'll get to. But you know, first and foremost, what we're seeing with our clientele is it's not all or none. It's not work from home or be in the office, right? The, the smart companies are incorporating basically a work from home strategy, which usually includes one or two days a week where they're allowing their employees to work from home, in addition to coming into the office the rest of the time, which is seen by employees as a huge perk, you know, anywhere from a, I think it's like eight or 9% to, you know, 15% pay increase to have that opportunity to work from home. At the same time, we're seeing clients that are implementing a work from home strategy and expanding their space. 
because the way they are, their company culture, they want everybody in the office Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and everybody works from home Tuesday, Thursday. So they are growing. They are, they actually just signed a lease for additional space and they're leaving it dark Tuesday and Thursday. So it's, it's, that's why I'm saying it. There's a lot of gray area, but for the most part, what we're seeing is people coming back to the office with that work from home strategy and, and getting back to business as usual. Have you heard any kind of stories from, you know, business owners about why, like, or the age of people that want to come in and not want to come in? Do like older workers not want to come in as, as well as, or do younger workers not want to come in? Because to me, your workplace is also where you socialize. It's also where you network yeah. and, and learn. Is it? I couldn't agree more. And, and I'm not really hearing stories, but what we're seeing is the older generations are in the office. Some of them never left in Orange County, if you can imagine that. And it's the younger generations that are, you know, feel that they're entitled to this work from home ability, <laughs> if you will. But I agree with you 100%, Alan, and that's why I'm I'm bullish on the office market because even prior to the the pandemic, we were seeing landlords and businesses spend huge amount of money on tenant improvements to their space because they want to. I mean, basically, how do you retain and retract top talent, you know, and then send them home to work, right? The office space is critical for that. It helps you express your company culture, your company branding, right? With the right strategy, you can really maximize eternal efficiencies. And what we're seeing right now is the the companies that are expanding and the landlords that are doing well are the ones that are spending money on their office space to help these people want to come back to the office, entice them, if you will. And that's why we're seeing the, the, the creative office, the foosball table, the open kitchen you know, area, the amenities, the gym in the common area, the yoga studios, which is fantastic. It's, it's a very conducive workspace. And those are the type of buildings that I like to be in. So that, that Silicon Valley idea of uh, foosball tables and ping pong tables, it's spreading to professional services as well, then, basically? <laughs> It has been for okay. first time. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I don't yeah. think they're doing the kegerators anymore, but there's the beer. Is they doing the beer? It's <laughs> shocking. <laughs> the beer keg in there. For anybody wanting to know about commercial real estate brokerage, what is the most important things that they should know? What I, I would say is first and foremost, Talk to a professional. As I mentioned a little earlier in the podcast, we have a lot of value add services that we provide to our clients, a lot of touch points throughout the transaction and over the course of their lease. And the the underlying reasoning and in the 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 reason we focus on representing the tenant, the occupant, is because the industry is very landlord friendly. It historically, traditionally is a landlord dominated industry. Everyone's in place to represent the landlord start to finish. So when I'm talking to a tenant or a buyer or anyone that's interested in commercial real estate, it's really simple. It's just talk to a broker, right? Just like you wouldn't represent yourself in a court of law. Don't represent you re represent yourself with your real estate, whether it's leasing space for your business or purchasing or an investment. There's just too many nuances. And again, everyone's in place representing the landlord for the most part. So get help. So it's like, it's one reason, just that's the main thing, because you can cover from there. You can help them. Yeah. I, when I talk to anybody, prospect or client, and if I leave you with anything, it's hire a broker, first and foremost. Hire someone that you trust, interview brokers, hire someone that you feel is the best fit for your business, and then know what you're signing up for. Um, that's, I think, a huge one, especially with the the way the, the leases are written. Know exactly what you're signing up for. What are some of the common myths or misconceptions about commercial real estate brokers that you find yourself dispelling with, an, with a client? Yeah, that's a very good one. The first one is I don't need a broker. I'm just going to handle this on my own. 
And I think that's just completely backwards. Again, landlords have hired professionals to represent their best interests start to finish. Leasing agent to lease out the space, getting top you know, dollar and fees amount of concessions. Attorney drafting the leases, property manager running the building day to day, collecting rents. So, without a doubt, hire a broker to represent your best interests. To further that, a lot of often we run into groups that think they only need a broker when they're relocating or trying to find a new space. If they're renewing their existing lease or renegotiating their existing lease, that they don't need a broker in that event because they have a good relationship with the landlord. And again, I will, I'm more passionate about this than anything that is completely backwards because once you're in the space, you are absolutely a captive audience. And thinking that you're going to work directly with the landlord to get a better deal is not true. They are not a charity. They are in the business of real estate and making money off their real estate. When you're relocating, you inherently have leverage. You're not in the building. You can walk away. When you're renewing, you're inherently a captive audience. And the best way to to get around that is by hiring a broker, without a doubt. And is that because you have a a potential move option for them if they don't get a better lease agreement? 100%. 100%. You're no longer a captive audience. Any good broker, the first thing they're going to do is educate you on the market to show you what other options are out there. And that's all information that you'll be able to use as leverage in your renegotiations. And that's one of the first things we tell any landlord or their agent, hey, we're representing client ABC. They're very interested in renewing their lease, but they're also looking at alternative options. So based upon that, here's where we need to be for the lease renewal. And we propose our terms and conditions. Would you say negotiation is a strong point of view and for yourself or how, how is how do you kind of view that? Your no, absolutely. Team? Absolutely. On, on a number of different levels. I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for 20 years. So we know what to ask for. We know the games the landlords are playing. And, you know, we've seen it so many times where we're not involved or before we're involved. The landlord or the agent comes to the tenant and says, hey, here, sign this lease and we'll drop the rate 10 cents. And I'm like, that's great. But what about free rent? What about your annual increases? What about your base here for calculating operating expenses? What about your option to renew? What about your option to expand? You know, what about tenant improvements? Oh, really? I can ask for that? And the list goes on. I mean, there's so many other nuances and protections and concessions that we can get out of the landlord that a lot of people don't need to ask for, that don't know to ask for, I should say. That's awesome. That's incredible. What does strategic planning with a client mean? That's a great question. So, you know, it's it's so often we see clients that just take down a space because that's all they know, or that's just the only option that they have. And It's really working with our client to just empower their real estate. So not look at it as a sunk cost and, oh, I just got to pay rent because I need a place to operate my business. But let's talk about what real estate can do for your business. How can it help you express your brand and your company culture? How can we set up your space to maximize eternal efficiencies and employee productivity and really improve or affect your bottom line, right? maximize the client experience. And that, as I mentioned earlier, it comes down to sitting down with the client and understanding their needs and just strategizing on how we're going to get them from from point A to point B. But I I can't tell you how many times we see it where a a business, they're full, they're, they're, they're filled up in their space. And they just take the vacant space next door, no matter how big it is. Is it 1,000 square feet? Is it 2,000 square feet? It doesn't matter. I need more space. And that's the easiest, right? So what I'm saying is let's sit down and let us do our our interview. Let us bring in a space planner to help do a needs assessment and figure out what is the best layout for you? What is the accurate square footage for you? As opposed to conforming to what the building has to offer, let's look at what the tenant and the business needs and then turn to the market to find them the ideal space. And that encompasses everything. Location, budget, growth, amenities, image, 
Where are the clients coming from? Where are the employees coming from? Where are the executives coming from? And more. But it's taking all that information and, again, with the consultative approach, educating them on what their options are. So, Good, good. Like I said, I've known you for a while. I was clueless as to what you did. I, to be honest, I, I even like Googled or chat GTV, what does a real estate broker do and everything? And it, it's obvious. It seems like it's obvious, but I can even tell still that, that you, there is way more behind the scenes that the broker such as yourself there, there, can help. There with. really is. And it's, it's crazy because like we, even to this day, we went across people that have been in business for years, decades and haven't used a broker. You know, because they think they have a relationship with their landlord. And it's like, well, look, you see that sign in front of the building that says CB Richard Ellis or Lean Associates or Void? That that group works for the landlord, you know? How, how do you get paid? Well, great question. So that's another misconception if you want to add it to the list. So what's 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 amazing about our service is it doesn't cost our clients anything. And people often ask, well, how does that work? And simply put, it's an industry standard landlord paid fee. And now if you want to break that down further, because I'm sure there'll be questions, I always liken it to a residential transaction. There is a pre-existing fee built into every transaction. And this is why I say use a broker. Don't go direct. You're not going to save yourself that small percentage fee. What's going to happen is if you go direct, the landlord's broker is going to double end it and get the full fee all the while representing the landlord. So basically what happens is any broker, my firm or any other firm, will simply split that pre-existing fee with the landlord's agent, just like in a residential transaction. Awesome. Good. It's a no-brainer. Like that, again, that's why I'm very passionate about anyone I speak with, it's use a broker. Don't, unless that is your brother <laughs> or your sister. It's it's they it, just use a broker. Okay. Has our power partners USA golf lessons and networking helped your golf game and business in any way? Absolutely. On both fronts. I've made some great business partners connections that I'm excited to refer my clients to. As you indicated earlier, I'm actually representing one of the power partners, helping them find a new office space. And I'm enjoying golf more than I ever expected. Right, right. Well, Deb and I look forward to playing with you again. Uh, it was fun always. last time we played. And it's always, uh, you know, that is our goal with, with the, the golf lessons and the networking is to do business. That's the number one goal. So we're glad that we can see a, uh, that it's helping you. Or oh, absolutely. And, and, and you've heard me say this. I think you guys are, are doing a fantastic job with that all around. I, I mean, everything from the venue to the golf pro, to the the power partners that you're bringing in, the the frequency, everything about it, I think is just fantastic. Great. Thank you. Yeah, we enjoy it. I've enjoyed this conversation. It's really, like I said, I, I've been looking forward to it. And and now I, I feel like I truly understand not only what you do, but what that industry does. Awesome. I've been looking forward to this too. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Alan. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>